Welcome back to Timo's Dinky Detailing. Today I'm going to be doing a Dinky 25Y Jeep. This is a civilian Jeep. Here's the model. It's a basket case. The casting has been heavily damaged uh, through its life. It looks like it's been repainted. So it's going to need a lot of work. Uh, this one I started a long time ago and then left it on the shelf and that had the unfortunately unfortunate result that I lost uh, a bit of material in the disassembly of the model so I don't have anything on the disassembly of the model but I'll show you what it looked like here's some of the parts before I got on to the later uh, work so here's the rust remover uh, this is a long-term stuff put in my steel parts there's the towing thing. I don't actually put that one back on. And then the steering wheel. There's a bit of rust on these things, so I leave that overnight. And when they come out, the rust is all gone. So I, gen I generally do this with all this with all the metal parts if there's if there's rust on them. If there's no rust, don't have to do it. So there's the steering wheel and the axles they're also going to get polished up and here's the hitch which i end up not using so i'm going to paint strip the paint so they go into the uh, heavy container and outside and the boiling water goes in and then i follow it up with caustic soda and i've i've I don't know what it is in Canada. We I can't get a good quality paint stripper. Uh, I see people online. They put some paint stripper on and then they do a time lapse and you watch the paint bubble up. Well, my paint stripper doesn't work like that. Uh, it it causes the paint stripping to take two days. So this uh, makes it very quick and easy using caustic soda. So it's out of the paint stripper, out of the caustic soda, and I buff it up on the wheel on my uh, bench drill press and that makes fast work of it I can't get into some of the corners but uh, anyway you can see the damage on this it's all dented up um, it's going to need a lot of a lot of uh, filing and sanding and and filling so I start with the bent parts here and uh, straighten them out that's the easy part because just to squeeze and tug and pull until the thing is straight. Now the hard part comes with the parts that are damaged. They're mushroom. They've been hammered at so much that uh, they're not flat anymore. And of course some of the material has been displaced. So I've got to replace that. So here I'm taking off the mushroomed portion. I was thinking now, looking at it, I could maybe have taken a hammer to it and try and re replace it back where it came from. Anyway, maybe next time I'll give that a try. So in this case I'm using uh, Mr. Hobby Putty. This is interesting stuff. It's pretty good. It sticks very well to the model. Uh, the only problem is I find that it's it, it dries very, very quickly and trying to get it in place uh, in time can be a challenge but uh, and also the whole tube is tending to dry up right now so i probably have to replace it and i've only used about 10 percent of it so i go in here and i take a lot of trouble trying to fill that in and making that front square again i show you just a little bit of the work but it really was a lot so now I'm going on the buffing well. This is something I've been thinking about because I'm often making a model where the bumpers are cast into the model and I'm painting the thing and then at the end I'm, I'm painting the chrome type of paint onto the bumpers to try and make them shiny. And the big surfaces it's hard to get a good smooth coat. So what I'm doing here is I'm buffing that bumper on the buffing wheel. It gets all very, very shiny. And then I'm thinking, well, if I do that, and here's the, the spare tire holder, it's made of steel, and 
It's all bent out of shape, but here I'm buffing it up so it's shiny as well. And I'm thinking that that's a better way than having to paint it. So after buffing it, I'm going to have to protect the finish and then tape it up before I paint it. And then I'll leave that tape on the bumper throughout the painting process. So we're going to see how that works out. Uh, if this works, then that's what I'm going to be doing for all of the models in the future that have a cast bumper. Of course, a lot of them have plastic, uh, chrome-plated plastic bumpers that have been destroyed, and then that won't be possible. So this is my Tamiya Pink Fine Surface Primer, which is primer for red paint, so you can guess what color it's going to be. And there were a couple of different versions of the Jeep. This, this one, the casting actually, is of a civilian Jeep. The uh, military one has various differences, including the spare tire being on the back, uh, not on the side. So it's a civilian casting, so it's going to be a civilian uh, version of the Jeep. So there's the very tiny steel base and that gets a satin black finish. And here I'm using a trim clad uh, rust paint spray bomb to paint it. It gives me a very beautiful coat and it covers really nicely on that uh, pink primer. The one drawback of using this particular paint is that you can't just spray the normal lacquer over top of it, the clear lacquer. Um, you have to use the floor polish because this stuff will dissolve under the under that clear lacquer. So here the tape comes off of that bumper. And there you have it. I have a nice shiny bumper and touching it is not going to damage it. Here, same thing for the spare tire holder. Still looks a little bumpy, but anyway, it's shiny at least. So for the front grill, I'm using these are uh, this is a panel line accent. This is for plastic models where it's a robot or something, and it's made from multiple panels. And you put this stuff, it's very liquidy. You put this stuff and it runs through capillary action throughout the those fine joints. So here it works very well and you can see once it dries. Uh, it looks like you're looking through it's you know through the grill into the dark. So I'm pretty happy with that result. Here I'm painting again. I always paint my headlights, well most of the time I paint my headlights white. Uh, Dinky didn't do that, and they they did it in silver they, because they would usually spray silver to cover bumpers and other things, but the headlights would always come out silver as well. I, I think this one makes it look like the headlights are on, so I always do this. So here I'm painting the indicators. I'm using this uh, orange paint I got from a friend. Uh, it's a, actually a uh, fluorescent orange. It's hard to get orange to show up on a red surface so the fluorescent orange I think helps a bit. So I've printed up some decals and I want to decorate this one like it would be on the street. That looks a little bit, uh, I don't know, it looks a little bit big. I'm gonna have to scale this down I think looks wrong. I'll get rid of that and let me put on one that looks a little bit better to scale. This is more like the size that the that Chrysler would put on the actual Jeep. And there goes my penny farthing. Now this is the what's the remaining of the uh, windshield frame came off of the model. Um, 
I'm going to replace it. I've made decals uh, left the left and right. So this is what I'm going to do is attach these decals to a piece of clear plastic. Uh, so it'll be it'll be sandwiched between decals on each side. So this is a uh, container. Oh yeah, chicken tacos. We get these from. Uh, <laughs> if you want to look for this plastic, you can get it from Costco. Uh, but you can get it off any. There's all kinds of products that are that have plastic windows and plastic containers. So you want to find one that's shiny and clear. In this case. The clear business is not that important because it doesn't matter. It's going to be the surface of the decal paper, which isn't as shiny as the plastic, unfortunately. So this goes on pretty easy. It's a big thing. I'm going to cut it out afterwards. So you just put it in some place and squeeze out the water. So here I'm doing the other side. It's upside down, so I put some water onto the back side of, of the plastic and put the other decal. Now that little hole reaching down, it's part of the design of the original window, and that hole uh, went through where, this, where the screw, screw would go through that hole and hold this windshield in place. And it was a big chunk of steel. So uh, kids would try to take that off and somebody <laughs> hit on this one but you're sure as heck not going to get that you're not going to break it off or anything it's steel but I did this with plastic and in the end um, it, it didn't work I had to uh, in the end I had to cut off that loop and just glue it uh, underneath back into place in the end so here I just trim around the decals And in the end, I sprayed it with with the uh, Mr. Hobby lacquer, uh, which protects the decals and made it look a little bit more clear. So, for the, I did for the bumper, the polishing. I'm going to do it on this one also for the wheels. Uh, I've done it before. I wanted chrome-looking wheels, and I'm painting it with that uh, silver paint. And then when you're trying to put tires on it, you smudge the paint and you lose the shiny look that the uh, paint is very uh, delicate but if I buff up these uh, wheels and um, they, they're impervious to your finger you get a fingerprint you just wipe it off with a with a tissue so this goes into the lathe and this is my way now of doing all my uh, axles when I want to re restore them uh, on the on the vehicle then I don't have to hammer at them. I drill a little hole in here. First a center drill and then I drill a, a clearance hole and this goes in about a quarter of an inch and then what I do is I have a hole and then I, I get a nail and these are these are like little picture framing nails Here it comes out. You can see I put it in the sleeve because uh, there's a hole in it. Because you can't just put it in the collet because the uh, shaft, the axle shaft, has a a mushroom at the other end. So here I turn down. This is a this is the nail I was telling you about to get the one with the bigger head. And then I'm spinning that in the lathe. And then I just take a file and round it off. And then I go in. Here I'm just buffing the axle, but I did the same buffing. Uh, but I didn't record it on the on those nails buffing it on the buffing wheel and you'll see um, how nice it looks in the end here's here's one of the nails I did I've got to shorten it up so that it fits into that quarter inch hole so I've got these pliers where I've cut off the jaws so the only part left is the sharp part and it goes in there and you can see look how shiny that thing is so in the end it's hard to see that it's not it's not an original mushroom. So this this is a tire on the on the right is a bigger one. I found these uh, online, so they're one millimeter bigger diameter. And this is this vehicle is kind of like a truck. And if you put the small the small usual tires on them, uh, they they look too small. So these ones these ones are fantastic. They're they're a slightly bigger size by one millimeter diameter, but they make a big difference on the look of the model.
So I just put these, put them back onto the axles that have been drilled on the ends. And I put my wheels on the other side. A little bit of epoxy, five minute epoxy from Dollarama. And there's my little button end. You can see just a tiny, tiny bit of, of the epoxy. This one, this one wants to pop back out. You've got to break that air barrier. So there you go. They're very shiny, and in in life you can't really see that it's not whether which which side has the original button, which side doesn't. So this steering wheel has a, its own little shaft, and you've got to tap this one in place. I think I need to get a smaller hammer. So that went uh, surprisingly well. So uh, let's start get the base back on here. And here you can see I'm putting this windshield in and it's a bit of a fable. I have my clever idea. I, I uh, cut off the hole that wasn't, uh, wasn't fitting and I glued it on and used the tire as a clamp and I put it there and you and you oh, I didn't show it because it didn't actually work it it stuck up uh, it's not a steel thing it gets stuck so I, I just cut it off and I glued it in place so there I maneuvered the base back on and tightened it up and a little bit of detail not much very little detail I put on this just these brackets for the windshield and the hinges for the hood. So to remind you of what it looked like, it really was a basket case. You can see how damaged everything is, dented. Let's see what it looks like now. So that's quite a big difference. I think uh, this color scheme which was original a dinky color scheme is beautiful the red and the black looks really really sharp so remember to like share and subscribe um, doing those things really helps my channel so I really appreciate it when you do it so I hope you enjoyed this episode of Timo's dinky detailing until next time be seeing you